How's it going, guys? This is Alfred, and uh, today I'm going to talk about one problem that I've been facing recently. Uh, so, if you are working in the field of like big data or machine learning, then you probably would use something like a uh, Hive or Spark to handle the data. And then usually we use those kind of tools to prepare training data uh, to train uh, some kind of machine learning model. And then in Hive or Spark, there's a format called uh, ORC, which is pretty commonly used. Recently, I encountered this problem is like when I download an ORC file uh, to my hard drive and I try to use Python, uh, especially like Pandas, to process the data, uh, then it kind of like have the problem of like uh, telling me that uh, some ORC library is not installed, so I cannot use the function uh, to do that. So uh, to make it more concrete, uh, this is one example. Uh, so what I want to do is actually I have a, a sample ORC file, and then I can import pandas, and I want to use pandas uh, this function, which is supposed to be very convenient, like a pd dot read ORC, and you read a file and then it will generate a data frame for you. So let's see what happens there. So I kind of keep running into this kind of error. Uh, the error basically is complaining. There's It's missing a module uh, called pyarrow.org. So I did a little bit of research. Uh, it looks like uh, under the cover of pandas, it kind of used this pyarrow library. And this library provides some common data access functions. And but for some reason, I use pip install to install this pandas library. But for some reason, the ORC part of this library is missing. To reproduce the problem, basically you, what you can do is just like uh, for pi error to import ORC, that would pretty much give you the same error. And uh, if you do it like using uh, import pyarrow.org directly is also the same kind of error. Uh, so from my research, is like I found this Jira ticket. Uh, people has been talking about it uh, as I read through the content. So I didn't go too much detail into it, but it seems like they are facing some compiling error. The ORC was written in C++, but they have some link error uh, so that they couldn't do it. So temporarily, they kind of kind of just like disable the ORC functionality. Uh, so the version that we are getting from pip install, it actually doesn't include the ORC version. So this person kind of mentioned about using Conda. And I also tried to try that, but it doesn't quite work for some reason. Uh, I guess maybe if you download it, download the source and compile uh, locally, and then just make sure the ORC module part was built successfully, it should work. But it seems like a little bit complicated. Today, I'm going to show how I work around this problem using a different package. So let me go back to my Jupyter Notebook. And uh, uh, so basically, I found there's a library called uh, PyORC. Uh, so we can just get it using pip install PyORC. And so this one is like uh, shows how to read the ORC file. So first of all, you just need to open it. And then uh, using this open command, given the name of the file, and RB stands for like a, a read binary, uh, meaning the file that we're opening is a binary format. And then the return of this open, we just call it data. So this data is a abstract file in Python. And then we can call this like a uh, PyORC library uh, dot reader and giving the open the file uh, into its constructor. So this will initialize and read the R object. Uh, then you can use it, uh, its iterator inside the reader. So basically using the for loop and then you can loop through each row and then print out the data for each row. So I actually using the same library to generate uh, this file. Uh, so the code is just right here. First of all, we import the library and also uh, I import this random thing just to generate data. So open a file. Uh, this time I use the WB option. WB stands for uh, write binary. And then 
uh, so you can specify writer. So this is the way to initialize a writer. So you just call it ORC dot writer, and then given the uh, the open file. So this one we just open it, and this string is kind of funny. It's actually uh, specifying the schema of the ORC file that we are uh, writing to. Uh, so it starts with a struct and this F1 is a column name and then column given the type of the column and then another column and its type and uh, uh, the third column I just call it F3 here these three columns uh, they are flow uh, so the writer object that we are initializing we call it writer here and here what I'm doing is just like having a for loop and giving like I'm going to write six rows into it and each row uh, I'm going just to put like three random number uh, generated by the random function here so there will be like writing uh, three numbers each row into this file so the file I just read uh, was actually reading the same file that uh, it produced here so after printing out we see there are six lines here and each line contains uh, three columns with three random number between uh, 0 and 1. So that means that OAC file is working uh, as expected. And uh, uh, so the content of this file is purely binary and then it's not human readable. You can kind of using an editor to open it up, but it will just be some uh, characters that's not readable to us. So we have to use some tool like uh, this library to decode it and to, to read the content of it. So uh, the solution here so going back to our problem again so what we want to do is actually to read this ORC file and uh, I want to generate a pandas uh, data frame out of this ORC file the way I do it here is actually kind of like open the file first and assign the open file into the variable called data and then initialize a reader this reader takes the open file as the input in its constructor and returns the reader object and this line is funny so what it does is actually the reader has a schema uh, member and you can actually read out its fields. This is like basically reading the schema of this file out. So you know exactly how many columns are there in the file. So here I just print out the columns. Uh, so the column is actually organized in a map. It's an, it's an internal structure. Uh, basically the key is, the, is a string. It's the name of the column and the value uh, is an object and this object is indicating what type this string is so it's not using the python original type it has some pyorc building type into it uh, it's that kind of object but this object like just from the name we know that it's just uh, saying this column is a float so another thing is like we can uh, read the schema member also provides a function this function can take a string and then tell you what's the index of this file basically like uh, I have an, a list uh, which say f1, f2, f3 and then for each one of this I'm going to find out an index and then the end result will be a list of this uh, index of the columns so here it shows like one, two, three in the exact order so as I uh, research online sometimes people say for this one the order is actually correct uh, so uh, we read a field and the field is like ordering a key like f1, f2, f3 but it's up to the implementation like a map usually is it doesn't keep any order this happened to be the right order but I don't know if it's gonna be in the right order every single time because it's not a requirement for a map or dictionary in Python language uh, supposed to do so the order can be uh, can be any arbitrary as long as it contains all the elements so what this part does is actually to solving that problem so it would actually construct a tuple inside the here and then for each of the column in the columns variable uh, columns is the map actually columns is the map is gonna so this for loop this internal for loop here is actually looping through each key inside the map and the key is the column name so and then we call this reader dot schema find column id to return the matching index for this column name we call it a sorted function so by default uh, if you given like a list so this is a list of tuples it will actually sort it by the 
the first element of the tuple, then it would kind of like sort the columns by its index. So the external uh, for loop here is just like reading the sorted uh, index and name pair, but we are just taking like the column name out. So it kind of produces like uh, the list of F1, F2, F3, which kind of matches the order of the schema of the file. So at the end, we just need to do like a, a data frame and call this PD uh, pandas uh, data frame constructor giving the reader and the columns uh, which is its uh, schema then it would actually produce a data frame correctly so uh, this is the data frame uh, that we read from the OST file uh, in here we see there are three columns uh, its name is f1, f2, f3 and uh, there are six columns the uh, index is from uh, 0 to 5 and the content let's see if it matches the, uh, the one that we use the write the ORC uh, file that we produce. So th this is like 0.76.35 and we look at that 0.76.35. So uh, the contents match each other. So in this way, uh, we kind of like get around the problem of like the pandas read ORC function is not working, but we use this like a pi ORC package to work around the problem uh, so that uh, we don't need to get stuck on the other default function that's not working. Okay, cool. Uh, so that's it for today. I did a lot of Google search. I don't find a very good answer if I search uh, this error directly on the internet. Uh, that's why I want to make this video uh, to share my experience and also for myself uh, future reference if I encounter a similar problem in the future. And I hope this is also helpful to other people, uh, other engineers who are working on uh, big data and machine learning related uh, subject, because I'm pretty sure there might be other people who encounter a similar problem in the future. All right, uh, so thanks for watching and don't forget to smash the like button uh, and consider subscribe if you don't want to miss uh, the future content like this that would help you improve your efficiency when uh, in your work when you're doing programming related stuff don't forget to turn on the notification thank you bye